You have told me about meeting Mandela before and refusing to wash your hands. Could you tell me about that meeting? <laughs> well, it was, um, of course, uh, in the Republic of South Africa. And um, he uh, was working extremely hard all over the country. And um, I simply joined him at one point. And uh, <laughs> the reaching up the hands and not washing the hands is correct. He uh, knew me. And um, uh, I just congratulated him and expressed my deep admiration and uh, what an inspiration he was for the whole world and how he managed to combine all of this with non violence. And then I was, you know, next to him and he was in a very local setting. And he was so similar to Fidel Castro in one particular way. Knowing all the details of the place, having a very big group of people around him, they were bombarding him with questions, and of course they were interested in anything that could create work, in any way of uh, getting out of the misery they had, and into from poverty to some kind of more decent living. And he was filled with the details, as I said, and giving very concrete advice. I was thinking of Fidel Castro all the time. A very different person, personality, very different method. But very similar in inserting themselves in the local situation and knowing the details. So that's essentially my memory. I mean, his body did not correspond, if you will, to his spiritual, in all the status, his political significance. All of the persons who made the world different, made the world better. And he suffered 27 years arrest because CIA had informed the South African agency boss, BOSS, where he was. Boss was not so well informed as CIA and they captured him exactly at the point that CIA had advised them to go to. 27 years. Well, that's the way to slow down history. History could have been sped up if he had been given a chance for his non-violent South African revolution earlier. But it came and all of the rest of us to this man who was born 100 years ago, today. What is the significance of Mandela for peace politics, peace practice or mediation as it is also called? I think um, to be able to run that very complicated country uh, where you also had, you know, uh, a considerable number of apartheid-oriented whites. And the whites were, of course, divided into those of Dutch origin and English origin. And they had been fighting among themselves for dominating somebody else's land, those who lived there. And they had somehow agreed to let the Indians be given a chance voting rights and things like that. Maybe see the Indians as some kind of acceptable halfway to what they were afraid of and what they looked down upon, the black man. And one of them was Nelson Mandela. Well, he has certainly affirmed the rights of the black man and today it is run by those, the overwhelming majority. Not in any way, if you will put it that way, sidetracking, uh, marginalizing the Indians and the whites. And this was, of course, very clearly seen in that fantastic combination of Frederick the Classic, white, and Nelson Mandela, black. And here I must, in a sense, congratulate the Norwegian Nobel Peace Prize Committee for once they did a very, they did a very good thing, giving them jointly the Nobel Peace Prize. Very well deserved. 
What is the promise of the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, or commission it was rather, in South Africa for your profession as a mediator? What promise does it hold? Is there anything to be learned from that? That it takes time, and you need many meetings. I think, in a sense, um, that um, they're a little bit too optimistic in believing that if you know the truth, reconciliation will follow. To know the truth, well, that appeals to knowledge. Reconciliation is a more modern spiritual thing. So there is something in between, stretching out to the other fellow, seeing the human commonality, that they are all one that played such a major role. But of course, the country was black. So the person we are celebrating today stood for the big, big majority. But that's clear very well the fact that there were stages before him. And um, the truly also non-violence. The children, also non-violence. So Nelson Mandela had much to stand on and to build on. I could just add, so grateful to Nelson Mandela for the inspiration he has given to all of us. <laughs>